Hello everyone and welcome to Meet Me at the Table. This is Colin and we are going to do our third scenario, Escape from Dal Goldur from the uh, revised core set. I am using decks specifically made just from this core set. I'll put links in the description below if you want to try them out. I have two previous videos, check them out. I am recording this one back to back from the previous one. So if I made any errors in that video, I'm not going to be able to fix them here because we're just gonna continue on. As always though, do turn on those Klingon subtitles if I make any errors and miss them in editing, I'll put them up in Klingon subtitles so you can see them as you're watching. I am super excited to play this scenario. Full disclosure, after 300 some plays, I've actually never played this scenario. So this will be the first time I'm trying it. Can't wait to do it. Let's dig in and start our setup. We have Escape from Dull Golder. You are playing the campaign mode. Put Mendor into play. Attach Appointed by Fate to a hero that the first player controls. So I will have that on Legolas. I'll show you that in a second. When a hero would be randomly uh, selected to be a prisoner, the prisoner instead is Gimli, so Gimli has been removed. Mendor is captured as well. Place Mendor face down next to the prisoner. This does not cause him to lose play, uh, leave play, otherwise we'd lose the game immediately, which is silly. Uh, then we have a response. After the first objective is claimed, flip Mendor face up and place one damage on him. Appointed by Fate is a ridiculously good card. The attached hero collects one additional resource during each resource phase. So that means Legolas will generate two resources. This means that although we only have two heroes for the beginning of this scenario, I have three resources. I think that's a change from the regular core set when you're playing without the campaign mode. Usually you would just have one or more or one less resource. So kind of lucky there. Uh, we will have these two cards. This is Mendor and Gimli. I've just set them face down aside. They have been captured. Let's draw our hand of six cards. We have a Valiant Sacrifice, a Quick Strike. We have Gandalf. We have the Veteran Axe Hand, a Feint, and Faramir. That's okay. I might mulligan that one. Let's try again. This time we drew Gandalf with a sneak attack, a guard of the Citadel. We have a Snowborn Scout, another sneak attack, and a Veteran Axe Hand. Okay. Uh, actually, the sneak attack Gandalf is awesome. Still no steward and not a lot of allies. For our Eowyn deck, we have Denethor, Barivor, and Eowyn. Don't forget, and I did not mention this, Aragorn also has the Valor attached to him, which states after the attached hero is declared as an attacker, exhaust Valor to heal one damage from the attached hero and deal one damage to the, to the defending enemy. Oh, cool. So let's draw six cards. Here we have our six cards. We've got a Gandalf. We have the Favor of the Lady, which I really like that one. Lord of Imladris, Self-Preservation, Lorien's Wealth, and a Miner of the Iron Hills. I still don't love that. I think I'm going to mulligan this. And unfortunately, this hand is not that great either. Other than two Test of Wills, we have another Favor of the Lady. We have a Hasty Stroke to cancel a Shadow Card effect. Another Lore of Imladris, and the Galadrim's Greeting. So now let's set up the rest of our scenario. Don't forget our Aragorn deck starts at 32 threat and our Eowyn deck starts at 27 threat. I will have the Aragorn deck be the first player. Okay, now let's read about our scenario. The Lady Galadriel of Lorien has asked you to investigate the area in the vicinity of Dol Godur. While doing so, one of your allies was ambushed by the orcs captured and is now being held in a dungeon cell. We need to search the encounter deck for the three objective cards, reveal them, and place them in the staging area. Place the Nazgul of Dol Guldur face up but out of play alongside the quest deck. So I have it on the side. You'll see that later. Then shuffle the encounter deck and reveal one encounter card for each objective. Here we have our three objective cards. We have the Shadow Key, the Dungeon Torch, and Gandalf's Map. We need to collect all three of these during this scenario. Each one of them is guarded and restricted, which means that when you choose your hero to hold this, that's one of their two restricted attachments. Because they're guarded, I need to reveal an encounter card to guard those three cards. Now, if it's a treachery, we'll just resolve it, and then that card is unguarded. We can then use the action to claim it, and you're going to see that's one of our goals is we need to claim those. Plus, Mendor will actually show up after we claim one of these objectives. Uh, so, let's start with this one. We have just the, uh, what is that, the Dungeon Jailer. Okay, he only has one threat. 
That's not terrible. Five, he has eight total. Five health and three shields. He's going to be hard to get rid of, especially without uh, Gimli. Our dungeon torch will be uh, guarded by the Necromancer Pass. I remember that one. And then the Gandalf's map will be uh, guarded by the Dull Goldur Orcs, which has a when revealed. The first player chooses one character currently committed to the quest to deal two damage. Ha! Don't have to do that one. No one is committed to the quest. So there you go. We have one, four, five, six total threat in the staging area. In order for us to gain these objectives, we need to either defeat the enemy, and then these cards will go into the staging area and we do the action on the card, or we have to progress through this location. So we're going to have to travel to that location and then get enough progress to discard the location that will then put that objective in the staging area and then we can claim it. We have a when revealed for the 1B side of the quest. Randomly select one hero. We've already done that. The hero is now considered the prisoner and cannot be used, cannot be damaged, and does not collect resources until it is rescued. The players as a group cannot play more than one ally card each round. Oh, that's right. So as a group, we can only play one ally card each round. That players cannot advance to the next stage of this quest unless they have at least one objective card and nine progress. But remember, after our first objective card is claimed, Mendor will come into play with one damage on him. And with that, we're ready to start the game, so let's go ahead and draw one card each. Gleowine will go into the Eowyn deck's hand, and we have Ever Vigilant here for Aragorn. Our Aragorn deck is only going to play one card, and that's a Veteran Axe Hand for now, spending the two resources Legolas has for our Tactics resources, and that's it. The Eowyn deck will hold on playing any cards right now, and I'm not going to use Barevor's effect because I don't want to fail at questing. If I do, that Jailer will take one of those objective cards and shuffle it into the encounter deck. I do not want to deal with that. So instead, I'm going to move right to questing. I'm going to quest not, <laughs> not with Legolas. We're just going to do Aragorn, and do I want to spend the resource to ready him? Yeah, I think I will for this round, actually. So I will spend the resource to ready him, but he is questing for two. We will use Eowyn for four, that's six, and two more with Bearvor, that's eight. There's currently six threat in the staging area, so this could be a bit of a challenge, but I do have ways to mitigate that by discarding cards. However, we have when revealed deal one damage to each exhausted character. The only two exhausted characters are Bearvor and Eowyn. So I'll have both of them take one damage. They should be okay. They have four and three health, respectively. The nice thing is that does not increase threat. Thank goodness. Our second card, when revealed, attach the iron shackles to the top of the first player's deck. Counts as a condition attachment with the text. The next time a player would draw one or more cards from the attached deck, discard this instead. Okay, so the next time we draw, we're just going to discard our shackles. We quested for eight. There's six threat in the staging area. That gives us a whopping two progress on here. Now we have the choice of do we want to travel to the Necromancer's Pass? If you remember from the last scenario, that makes the first player discard two cards in their hand at random. I've got two sneak attacks and a Gandalf in my hand. <laughs> do I take that chance? But I think I have to because three threat, it's going to, that's going to kill us. So I think, I think I've got to do it. I've got to travel here, which means we're going to take our hand of cards, give them a shuffle, and we're going to discard this one, and that's the Ever Vigilant. Okay, and then don't be Gandalf. Oh, one of the sneak attacks are gone, but I still think that was worth it. We have two enemies out here. However, the engagement cost of this Jailer is 38, so we don't have to deal with him right now. We do have to deal with the Dull Golder Orcs, but we know Legolas can take care of them no problem. So I do think uh, the Aragorn deck will optionally engage this one, and let's leave this one here. We'll grab a Shadow card for that Dull Golder Orc. We will use Aragorn to defend. The defense is 2, the attack is 2. And we do have a shadow effect. Deal one damage to each character the defending player controls. Two, instead, if the attack is undefended. Well, the attack isn't undefended. One, we can deal with one damage for each of them. That will mean, though, our veteran axe hand is one away from death. <laughs> he only has two health. Uh, then Legolas will simply attack. That will be enough to take this guy out. And the Gandalf's map will be out in the staging area. And we can now do this action. It says, raise your threat by two to claim this objective when it's free of encounters. When claimed, attach Gandalf's map to a hero you control. Counts as a condition attachment. 
If uh, detached, return it to the staging area. The attached hero cannot attack or defend. I know who can do that. And I, let's see, I can just raise our threat by two. I'm going to put that right on to Aowen. Because we attach that to Aowen, though, we will increase our threat by two to 29. Yeah, that's okay, though. We can handle that. And now we'll be able to quest to the next phase if we can. The other thing I'm going to do is Denethor. Oh, I try and do that again. I'm going to exhaust him to look at the top card of our deck. When revealed, each enemy and each location currently in the stage area gets plus one until the end of the phase. Oh, do I want that? There could be worse encounter cards. You know what? I might actually leave that on top so I know that's happening. Then I only have one other card I need to deal with uh, for our next round. Oh wait, I almost forgot something. I get to place two progress on this location and clear it thanks to Legolas because Legolas defeated an enemy. Now we have an action. We can raise our threat by two to claim this objective when it's free of encounters. This one though says at the end of each round, raise the hero's controller's threat by two. I don't want to pick that dungeon torch up quite yet, uh, but we'll put that out in the staging area. We'll move to end of round, increasing threat up to 30 for the Aowen deck and 33 for the Aragorn deck. Moving first player over to the Aowen deck, we know that Aragorn is simply going to draw the Shackles card, discarding that. And then for uh, the Aowen deck, she will draw the Daughter of Nimrindel. We also, of course, will generate our resources. We're going to play two cards this round for the Aowen deck, spending two spirit resources, putting out the favor of the lady and throwing that on to Eowyn. Eowyn now will have plus one willpower. After that, we will bring out Gleowine, spending two resources, but that's our one ally that we can play this round. And then we will exhaust Gleowine, and we are most certainly going to allow the Aragorn deck to draw a card because they have so many less cards. They drew another sneak attack. Oh my gosh, they have two sneak attacks still and a Gandalf in their hand. That is insane. Speaking of which, the Aragorn deck can't do anything because now the only non-ally card in their hand is sneak attack. We're not going to use sneak attack right now. So let's move right to the questing phase. We know we'll quest with five, six, seven, and I think that's it. Let's just quest for seven. We're not going to do anything on the Aragorn side. We'll then draw our cards. Our first one, we know what it is. Each enemy in each location currently in the staging area gets plus one threat. So there's only one enemy, so that means we'll add one threat to the staging area. And then our second card, we have another treachery. When revealed, until the end of the phase, raise the total threat in the staging area by X, where X is the number of players in the game, so that's two. So we're actually just going to raise the threat in the staging area by three, but we don't put anything else out in the staging area. We quested for seven. There's one plus three more, so that's four total threat in the staging area. That's three more progress on the quest card. That's not enough to move on. I'm actually okay with that. I think I'm going to wait another round before I want to try and push. Anyways, try and get a couple more allies out. And you know what I forgot? Mendor should definitely be out with one damage. Should be with Eowyn. Golly, there's these little things that I forget. I apologize. I wasn't going to quest with him anyways, so he's ready, which is great. That makes me wonder, do I think I can take this Jailer down? If I could take the Jailer down, that would be sweet. I need eight damage. I'm not going to be able to take the Jailer out, but I should be able to do a lot of damage to him if I have the Aragorn deck engage him. So Aragorn's deck is going to engage him. That means he'll get a Shadow card. I will defend yet again with Aragorn. He still has four health. Uh, let's see. We have no shadow effect. Oh, and that's a great card to get rid of. Uh, and two damage to our two defense. We're okay. Then we can attack. We have three plus two for five damage here. And one more from uh, Mendor for six. That'll deal him three damage, only two health remaining. We'll end the round by moving our first player token back over to the Aragorn deck, increasing our threats. 33, or I should say 31 and 34 respectively, will draw cards. Eowyn will draw a Northern Tracker. Not helpful in really any of these scenarios. And we have a Snowborn Scout for the uh, Aragorn deck. Moving into our planning phase, our Aragorn deck yet again is not going to play anything. <laughs> We're just going to have Gleowine be used for our Aragorn deck to draw a card. And they have a Citadel Plate, which is cool, but still not what I'm looking for. We're then going to spend three lore resources on this side. 
and that's just going to allow us to bring out the Daughter of Ninfrindel. This card, it says, exhaust her to heal up to two damage on any one hero. Not going to use that yet, but as damage comes along, that could be super helpful. She can also just quest for one, which could help us. Who knows? <laughs> and I'm realizing I should have used Denethor last time. I missed it, so I'm just going to move on. Should have used him to be able to look at the top card of the encounter deck. During the questing phase, we will quest with Eowyn for five. I may have said six one of the times. I'm so sorry. that I got so used to that last time. She's only at five right now. We'll add two more for Berevor. That's seven. And then one more here from the daughter of Nimrodel. That's eight. I'm hoping to quest through this time, so we will also use Mendor for nine. We'll draw our two cards. We have the Mountains of Mirkwood. Travel. Reveal the top card of the encounter deck and add it to the staging area to travel here. Ooh, it has a response though. After it leaves, play as an explored location. Each player may search the top five cards of their deck and add one to their hand. Okay, that's not bad. And that's adding two threat. We actually have nothing there right now. This is the Endless Caverns, Doomed One and Surge. So Doomed One means we each have to increase our threat by one. And Surge means we'll draw another one. I'll do the increase of our threat in a second. While Enchanted Stream is the active locations, location, players cannot draw cards. Ooh, all locations. Remember that Northern Tracker? <laughs> Might be kind of helpful now. Threats will be increased. Quick, let's do that. 32 and 35. We quested for a total of 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. 5 plus 4 is the 9 that we need to progress through this location. Players cannot advance to the next stage of the quest unless they have at least one objective card, we have one. Finding a hidden entrance to the dungeons of Dol Guldur at last, you attempt to make your way through the caverns beneath the hill, searching for your imprisoned friend. The Denzians of this labyrinth stand in your way while the jailers detain the prisoner. We need 15 progress for this one. Jeez. Response. After placing any number of progress tokens on this card, flip the prisoner hero card face up and place one damage token on it. This hero has been rescued and may now be used by its controller. The players as a group still can only play only one ally each round. Players cannot advance to the next stage of this quest unless they have rescued the prisoner and have all three of the objective cards. We only have three locations in the staging area and this is where Legolas is awesome. Let's make the enchanted stream our active location. That would stink because we cannot draw cards, but as long as we can kill that jailer, we'll place two progress on that and pop that before we can draw. <laughs> Take that. So let's make this the active location. Before doing that, of course, Mendor should ready because we completed a quest card and we each get to draw a card. So Eowyn will draw another hasty stroke and we have our steward of Gundor. That is awesome. We only have one enemy out. He'll grab a shadow card. We will defend yet again with Aragorn, and we'll flip this card up. Oh, this does have one. The, the defending player must choose and exhaust one character they control, two if this attack is undefended. No, the attack is defended, so we just have to exhaust a character. Easy. We'll exhaust Mendor, no problem. That means we can exhaust Legolas and the veteran Axe Hand. Look at that. Dwarves and elves working together. An attack of five. This Jailer has three defense, but only two health remaining. That should take this out. This objective will then go out into the staging area. I'm not going to grab that one yet because I have a plan for that one, and you'll see in a second. And that will allow us to pop this location. It only needed two progress. Legolas can throw that on there. And that's it. That's good for this round. So next round, so long as we get one progress placed on here, we can have Gimli show up. If you saw that shadow key, it says at the end of each round, suffer one damage for that hero. I'm going to give that to Gimli. At the end of each round, he's going to become more and more powerful. I already have the Citadel plate in my hand, so I can just throw that on him. <laughs> and he will be a beast come hopefully the stage three card. I am not going to forget to use Denethor. So we'll exhaust Denethor to reveal the top card of the encounter deck. Oh, we need six damage. Three, four, five, and we have range for one. I think that guy's not terrible, other than the two two shadow cards, but I do have a bunch of hasty strokes. Yeah, I'm going to leave him on top. I just love knowing what's there. It just makes it so much easier for us. So that's only two threat on top of the deck. Right now, I feel like our biggest worry is honestly our threat. We're going to be at 33 for the Aowen deck and 36 for the Aragorn deck. We're going to have to increase those threats by two 
uh, each of them at least once for the two objective cards. And then we need to race to the end so we don't have any problems with uh, threading out. Because remember, we can lose if one of us gets to 50 thread. Well, I should say if one of us does, we're okay. Because the other one can still win the game. But then they have to win by themselves. So that's going to be a lot harder if you think of that Aowen deck with trying to attack. Or the Aragorn deck trying to quest. We'll each draw cards, which we can do. And we have a Northern Tracker and the Horn of Gundor. Our Aowen deck is just going to use Gleowine to allow themselves to draw a card. Ooh, they have Gandalf in their hand. Cool. The Aragorn deck, you know what we're going to do. Steward of Gundor, without a doubt. Not even going to pay for it because it just will be exhausted to get those two resources back. A card that immediately pays for itself is always insane. And then since we can play one ally, why not? Guard of the Citadel, a 1102. Not great, but at least it could be fodder if we need it. For questing, Eowyn will go with five. We have two more here for seven and one more here for eight. We'll send our guard of the Citadel for nine. We'll draw our two encounter cards. Our first one we know, the Dull Gold Dura Beastmasters. Absolutely two threat, not terrible. Our second one is terrible. I hate this one. Each player must choose either exhaust each damaged character that they control uh, okay, which would exhaust both Legolas and the veteran Axehound and Mendor, or deal two damage to a hero you control with the most damage on it. So I could actually do that. I could do two damage to Barivor and two damage to Legolas. You know what? I was going to maybe cancel that, uh, but I think I might soak it and do the second section. Aragorn will take the two damage on this side, and Barivor over here will also take the two damage. Ooh, they are, uh, well, Barivor is one away from death, so I need to be careful there, but I can use the Daughter of Nimrodel to heal her next time. Sadly, that is not our second card because it surges, so it will surge into this one, the Great Forest Web. Each player must exhaust one hero they control to travel here. Okay, but it adds two threats to the staging area. We quested for 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Two progress. Yeah, you know, I feel like it might be worth just slowly increasing that. I've got two northern trackers. I'm going to discard one from our Aowen deck to add one more to that. And let's see, from our Aragorn deck... Let's discard the Horn of Gundor. I don't see myself using that to add one more progress. Essentially, we increased Eowyn's uh, total willpower by two. Because we added progress to the quest card, guess who shows up? We found Gimli. Gimli is with us now. He's slightly damaged. That's perfect. His attack is already three. He's pissed. He was abducted. We just broke him free. Let's take out his captors, shall we? Unfortunately, once the prisoner is rescued, the Nazgul of Dol Guldur shows up. This is a 5 threat, 4 attack, 3 defense, 9 health. <laughs> no attachments can be played on the Nazgul, so we can't put it into a trap or anything like that. When the prisoner is rescued, move the Nazgul of Dal Gordur into the staging area. After a shadow effect dealt to the Nazgul of Dal Gordur resolves, the engaged player must choose and discard one character they control. That even could be a hero if you get unlucky. So I've got to be careful with that. But now I have five more threats sitting out in the staging area. Don't love that. I have three locations sitting out in the staging area. I've got to decide which one I want to travel to. This one is only a one, but it would be the safest. This one makes us exhaust, each of us exhaust a hero. I don't think I can handle that. Not with uh, that uh, Nazgul out. So then it leaves this one. If we travel here, though, we have the unknown of revealing an encounter card. But uh, I think I'm going to do it. So I'm going to travel to the Mountains of Mirkwood. But that means I have to draw and resolve this card. This is oh, deal one damage to each exhausted character. Uh, that would be one damage. No, can't do that. Cannot do that. That would kill Barivor. Oh, my gosh. So I am not going to allow that to happen because I do have a test of will. Thank goodness. I have a test of will and I have two spirit resources. I'll use one to cancel that card. I'm canceling the when revealed effect, which is good. And then this becomes the active location. So I get two threat out of the staging area. In the encounter step, I have two enemies out here. I have to deal with the dull Golder Beastmaster because that's at 35 for its encounter uh, cost. And we have 36 threat for the Aragon deck. 
uh, or Aragorn deck. I just keep saying Aragorn because my son is reading the Aragorn series. Aragorn deck. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to optionally engage the Nazgul of Dal Godur. I'm going to do that with the Aragorn deck. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to have the Aragorn deck optionally engage that one. And then I am going to have the um, Eowyn deck optionally engage the Dal Guldur Beastmasters. In the combat step, the Beastmaster will get two shadow cards and the Nazgul will get one. Now, though, is where the sneaky Gandalf can come into play. We're going to spend one of these leadership resources. We can put one ally card into play from your hand. At the end of the phase, if the ally is still in play, return it to your hand. So I am going to play Gandalf. Gandalf will let us deal four damage to one enemy in play. Well, you can imagine which one I'm going to do that to. There's nothing stating that the Nazgul is immune to player card effects, so he'll take four damage, five more, and we've taken him down. I do want to mention, he is not victory. So if I do defeat him, he goes into the discard pile, and if I have to shuffle, he can come back out. We first, though, have to deal with the Beastmaster, so Denethor will exhaust to defend. We're hoping for no shadow effects. Uh, oh, this one does have one. The defending player raises their threat by the number of enemies in which they are engaged with. So that's one. So we're going to increase the threat of the Eowyn deck by one. And this one does have no shadow effect. That will mean Eowyn will move up to 34 threat. The nice thing is three damage to the three defense that Denethor has. We're good. Gandalf will go ahead and defend against that Nazgul, which is totally thematic and I love it. We have four attack against four defense. Oh, we do have a shadow effect. The attacking enemy gets plus one. So that means it will deal one wimpy damage to Gandalf. He doesn't care. Oh, but we do have a shadow effect. So we have to discard a character. The uh, guard of the citadel will be gone. So we lost the guard of the citadel. Eh, his sword must have fallen out of his hand. Let's then take down that Nazgul. We'll use Aragorn. He will deal one auto damage to that Nazgul. So the Nazgul now has five damage and he'll heal by one. So he only has two damage on him thanks to his Valor ability. But he's attacking for three. We then have Legolas attacking for three. That's six. Let's add Gimli for seven, eight, nine. And then two more here, 10, 11. That means this Nazgul is gone. 11 minus 3 is 8. 8 damage plus the 5 already on it. It's gone. I could have attacked with Legolas the Beastmaster, but I don't think I would have been able to take it out, and I'd prefer to get the 2 progress. We'll drop the 2 progress on to the Mountains of Mirkwood. I'd like to have Gimli continue to increase his attack, so I am going to have him do this action, increasing our threat to 38 to grab the Shadow Key. This will mean, though, at the end of the round, he'll take one damage. Bring it on. I'll then use the action on the Daughter of Nymphredel, Exhaust Daughter of Nymphredel, to heal up to two damage on any one hero. We need to save Berivor. Last thing that I want is Berivor dying because of a treachery card, so that'll put her back down to only one damage. At the end of the combat phase, Gandalf will come back into Aragorn's hand, and we can use him again with another sneak attack. <laughs> we'll end that round increasing our threats, 35, 39. A second point of damage will be placed on Gimli, so now his attack value will be 4. We'll move our first player over to the Aragorn deck. Eowyn will draw another Galadrim's Greeting. Too bad I won't have three blue resources. And we have a quick strike. Moving into our planning step, we will spend all these four resources from Legolas. We're going to put this Citadel plate onto Gimli. <laughs> Plus four health, he is going to be set. Then we will exhaust the Steward of Gundor to place two more resources onto Aragorn. And that will be it for the Aragorn deck. For the Eowyn deck, we're going to spend five resources and we're going to play out our one ally. You can guess who it's going to be because Gandalf saves the day. We're going to bring Gandalf out. Now we could deal four damage, could do all these cool things. I think what I'm going to do is actually reduce our threat by five. That means we'll go from 35 all the way down to 30. We're going to push hard in questing this time, so we will exhaust Aragorn for two and then use a resource to ready him. We'll add Mendor for three. We'll add five more with Eowyn, so that's eight. Two more from Berivor, that's ten. And then we'll add 11, 12, 
and four more, that's 16. 16 total willpower. I almost forgot I do need to claim the dungeon torch if I want to move to the next quest card. So I need to increase the threat, and I'm going to do the Eowyn deck uh, by two. So we're up to 32 to claim this, and we'll put this uh, on Barivor because Denethor would not hold a dungeon torch. There's currently three threat in the staging area. Oh, we have a when revealed. The player with the highest threat level attaches this card to one of their heroes. The attached hero does not ready during the refresh phase unless you pay two resources from that hero's resource pool. So that would be the Aragorn deck. Do I want to deal with that? You know, I could put that on Aragorn and we could mitigate that. Yeah, we'll put that onto Aragorn. Annoying, but there's actually worse things. Uh, because he will then just generate one regular resource, right? Because we can just spend uh, the Steward of Gundor to take care of that. Our second one is just a Cavern Guardian. It is Doomed 1, though, but that will be placed out in the staging area. Doomed 1 puts us at 33 for the Eowyn deck and 40 for the Aragorn deck. We quested for 16. There's a total of 5 threat in the staging area. That means we're placing 11 progress. 1 will clear this. And that states, after this leaves play, as an explored location, each player may search the top five cards of their deck for one card and add it to their hand. So I'm going to do that in a second. I also need to remember, I then get to place nine here. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So we each need to discard a card if we want to move. And I do think we're going to do that. So I will discard one card from the Eowyn deck, the Lore of Imladris. And the Snowborn Scouts. These scouts are kind of wimpy. We're going to discard this one from the Aragorn deck. So let's first do our reveal here, and then we'll look at quest card three. Here we have the five cards that we drew for the Eowyn deck. And you know what I see? I see this, which can help us get rid of that attachment on Aragorn. So we're going to grab the Miner of the Iron Hills. The five cards for the Aragorn deck, I actually think Mendor's Support might be one of the coolest ones to have. So we'll put that into our hand, shuffling the rest of these back in. Following a thread of sunlight, you discover a cavern opening leading out through the side of the hill. Stationed outside the cave mouth, however, is a large group of orcs. We have a forced. At the beginning of each quest phase, each player places the top card of their deck face down in front of them as if it were engaged with them from this, uh, in the staging area. These cards are called the Orc Guard and act as enemies with one hit point, one attack, and one defense. Oh, you know what? I keep forgetting. Mendor, I quested with him, so we each get to draw a card. So I'm sitting over here by Eowyn. Eowyn will, do will draw another daughter of Nymphredel. And the Aragorn deck will draw a Gondorian Spearman. Players cannot defeat this stage while Nazgul of Dull Goldor is in play. If the stage is defeated and the Nazgul of Dull Goldor is not in play, the players have won. So we might, if we just need seven progress here, we might not even have to worry about this. We'll put that enemy in front of us at the beginning of the quest phase, and then as long as we get seven progress on here, we win. Looking at the two locations in play, I actually think I'm going to leave them in the staging area. No reason. I, I can't go to this one because then I don't have Denif Denethor to defend. And if I go to this one, well, I just need two more progress to go through this, and I'm hoping I can do it next turn. So yeah, I'm just going to leave those two in the staging area. We are, however, going to engage the Cavern Guardian, and that will be the Aragorn deck. In the combat step, the Guardian will get one Shadow card, and the Beastmaster will get two. We will exhaust Aragorn to defend against this Cavern Guardian. The shadow effect we have is the attacking enemy gets plus one, so that means it's attacking for three, which means Aragorn will simply take one damage. That's okay, we can take that, we still have two health. Denethor will then defend against that Beastmaster. And let's see, we have first choose and discard one attachment you control. Discarded objective cards are returned. No, I have to discard an attachment. Well, I am going to discard. This will hurt our willpower, but I'll discard the favor of the lady. Oh, you know what? No, I'm not. I have resources. Let's use Hasty Stroke to cancel that. So I have one resource. I'm going to cancel that shadow card effect. Doesn't happen. Oh, this one has a shadow effect too. This says raise the defending player's threat by four. No, no, no. <laughs> Don't I have another one? I do. I have another one of these. I have another blue resource. I'm going to cancel that one too. So I don't have to raise my threat by four because I'm going to have to raise my threat by three at the end of this round. So that would have been a threat raise of seven and that could be really bad. Whew. 
All right, we uh, took the attack then just of three. Denethor is okay. For our attack this time, Legolas will simply attack and take out this cavern guardian so we can place out the two progress. And we don't want to forget that Gimli will take another point of damage. Legolas also gives us the two progress here, so we only need five more to win the game. Oh, I'm excited. Let's do this. We'll move up threats one, two, three, thirty-six for the uh, Aowen deck because of the uh, card, the objective card that they have. 41 for the Aragorn deck. We'll move this over. We'll each draw cards. Eowyn will grab Stand and Fight. And the Aragorn deck will grab Bjorn. On the Eowyn side of the table, I think the only thing we're going to do is play the Miner of the Iron Hills. That will pay two resources here, and that means we can discard one uh, condition attachment from a hero, right? After the Miner of the Iron Hills enters play, choose and discard one condition attachment from play. We're going to get rid of this. However, don't forget Aragorn is still exhausted right now. Oh, and I needed to mention that poor uh, Gandalf was discarded at the end of last round as well. I am realizing I was going to trigger this at the wrong time. I should have paid the two resources during the refresh phase, and I certainly could have. I would have spent these two resources so Aragorn was ready. And, or Aragorn was ready, and then he'd gain his one resource at the beginning of the round because he still had the two uh, which uh, from the previous round, which is great because then I can exhaust Steward of Gondor, drop two more resources on him, and then just for fun, because who doesn't want to put Bjorn out? Uh, Bjorn's going to be out. That's costing six tactics resources, and I've got tons of those, so I'll spend all six to have that out. Moving into the quest phase, we will each get one orc enemy in front of us. That's one of our cards. We'll just place that up in front of us. But I'm hoping I won't have to worry about those. I am going to spend one resource right here to be able to play Sneak Attack. Who doesn't want to sneak Gandalf in? Gandalf is going to jump in. He can deal four damage, reduce threat by five. I think I'm going to reduce Aragorn's deck by five for their threat to have him out. I'm also going to play this, which will give plus two willpower to Mendor. So I'm just going to slide underneath there so I remember, because I'm going to be questing with him. This means for questing, we have four plus one, which is five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, plus the two more, so that's twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and we will use a resource to ready him, and four more for eighteen. And I was getting so excited, I forgot about the five threat that we just reduced because of Gandalf coming into play. We have 36 threat. We'll grab that first card and we have when revealed to deal one damage to each exhausted character. No, no, no. I don't want to deal with that because a lot of people are exhausted. I have one more test of will and I have this resource. Oh, I love it. Test of will is such a great card. And our second card, hopefully it's not bad. No, it's just a location. Three threat. We quested for 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12. That's more than enough here. There is no Nazgul in play. We just won the third scenario. For our resolution, we have determined one of the following. If Mendor is still in play, add Mendor to the campaign pool. If you do, put Mendor into play at the start of each scenario during your next campaign. Each player may include one copy of the Mendor's support in their deck during the campaign. That is awesome! That means when I'm planning on doing the Dream Chaser expansion, and so we could have Mendor for that campaign. That's so cool. Well, there you have it. That was the third scenario of the Lord of the Rings, the core box. I love it. Oh, I love this game so much. I love the lore. Ah, oh, the experience is great. I am thinking for my next campaign, the Dream Chaser campaign for sure. I'd like to know a couple things from everyone. First of all, do you like seeing with two decks? I had a couple people say they prefer one deck. So I'd like to hear, would you prefer to see a one deck playthrough for Dream Chasers or another two deck uh, playthrough? That's my first thing. Second thing, I am wondering about how I set up decks for this. Do you want me just to use the uh, core set and the Dream Chaser expansion, or do you want me to expand the uh, uh, set of cards that I can use? I can go either way. I was kind of leaning towards just using the core box plus this, so that way, if you get that, you can build those same decks and play through the scenarios with me. Let me know what you think. As always, thank you so, so very much for watching. Thank you to the Patreons for being a patron. We really appreciate you. Anyone who's watching, we appreciate you. It just get, keeps us going. Barrett and I get so excited. 
If you're excited to see what comes next, then I need you to meet me at the table. Goodbye, everyone. (laughs) 